Hello there. Welcome to another angling adventure. Today I'm on the River Earn. Roll that intro. Today started off well, apart from the drizzle. I've had one skimmer, well not a skimmer, one hybrid of about a pound maybe, and a proper river urn bream. Not been fishing long, just got down, put some bait in. I'm currently throwing in the, uh, the Guru bait up feeders just to get a better bait down. But there's some tow in the river today, it's moving that way. Gives it to be overclassed and drizzle on and off all day. Which is kind of Northern Irish weather, so you just have to get used to it. At some point in today's video, I'm going to do a rundown of the seat box and how I organise my fishing station. I know from the outsider it might look like organised chaos, but it's not organised chaos, trust me. But that's all to come. Already we're off to a better day than what we had uh, last weekend. So it's a fucking thumbs up today. <laughs> a few moments later. Well, we've had another hybrid. I like these Guru Discouragers. They are really good. Really, really good. Pity they don't float, but you can't have everything, I guess. Let's get this out of the way. And I'll show you this boy. There we go. Nice hybrid. Snottery, snottery things. But, three fish. So today's already equaling last week. I'm fishing with a slightly different rig for this, for this week. Let me show you. Right. There is a little loop, a second loop, and a big loop that the feeder can slide up and down. It's on a swivel that can be changed, and you just thread on your hook length to the other loop. It's a it's my normal rig that I would have used on rivers. Let's get some more bait out and let's get some more fish. This is the issue with drizzle. Because it's drizzling, everything was going to get soaked. So all the gear from last week that was already soaked is now getting even more wet. <laughs> I'm going to love it when I have a garage that I can store all this stuff in. A 
I'm still in the baiting up process, I'm still within that hour where I will use the baiting up feeders before I change to a smaller size of a feeder. I'm fishing at 33 metres. There is a boat anchored up on the far shore at the marina. That is my target. And it's a nice easy flick with no stress. We're fishing in the river Erne. You've seen me fish here before. This part of the urn is deep. And there's movement in the water today, which means that the river is going that way towards Enniskillen. That isn't bad. I like it when the river moves. The way my feeder rod's going to sit today. The bait's going to hit, the feeder's going to hold bottom, it's going to be like the anchor. There's then going to be a little bow of line in the current. And that's going to make your tip bend, like two tips like that there bent over. And the bite she'll get is the tip springing straight back. Because the fish has hit the bait, knocked the feeder loose, and the tip springs back. So you're basically getting drop back bites. Or you could have like savage bites with a rip tip curls around, but the majority of this style of fishing you're going to get drop back bites. It's nice easy fishing, my rod's on a rest. I'm not holding it. I'm giving it I've given the feeders five minutes before I refill them and cast them out again. That ensures that the, that there's it's down there for plenty of time and when I pull the feeder out it discharges all the feed that's there and it sets the trap for the next cast. Today's feed is a kilo of black crumb that I've got from Fish and Tackle and Bait and a kilo of Sonia Bait's uh, natural black roach. It doesn't go solid, it doesn't go jet black, it goes like a like a washed out grey colour. It goes that colour. And there's tons of hemp in it. There's tons of other feed particles in it. And it's it would be an, an active ground bait. If you put it in the side of the margin, you'll see bits of hemp kind of popping off and floating up the water columns. But because I'm fishing in deep water, the feeder is taking it straight to the deck and let it fizz on the deck. I'm using a four foot hook length to a size 12 uh, Guru feeder special. Feeder special from Guru. They're my standard go-to fine wire pattern. I do use some of the Preston Naturals range, I do use them as well. But if I'm hauling, if I'm actually bagging up, which is very rare, but if I'm bagging up, I switch to a Kamasan animal hook. They are by far, by far the best, you know, yanking bank hooks out there on the market. Hold a point, there's kind of offset so that when you, they kind of act almost like a circle hook. But I'm not having them on at the minute. If I start to, if I start to catch decent fish, like what I've caught, and they start to come with a bit more regularity, then what I'll do is I'll shorten the hook length down and put on maybe a size 10 animal hook. I'm feeding corn hemp, castor and maggots. I haven't fed the chopworm yet. I don't think I'm going to need to. If the fish of that stamp are in the swim and they're showing up this early, I don't think I quite need to start putting chopworm in just yet. I will end up putting worm on the hook. And I will end up putting corn and stuff on the hook later on in the session. But by feeding corn early on, the fish that are down there are getting used to corn and picking it up, so for me corn's one of those baits if I'm fishing on a river like this, it's uh, 
later in the session sort of bait. You feed it through the day, the fish get used to the fish start to pick it up, and then later on in the session after maybe you know, three quarters of the sessions away, then the last quarter I would fish with corn on the hook. But that's for later on in the session. Getting a fair bit of boat traffic today. That's mostly they're mostly in the channel, so it's not affecting me. Three fish, two hybrids, and a bream. Aye. Just having a bit of a quiet patch here. Still keeping the feed going in. At this point we're fishing about two hours. So in two hours I've had three fish. One of them being quite a nice bream. The other two being hybrids. Still giving the feeders five minutes every cast. Just let them sit down five minutes in the water, let them discharge, let them. Still quite a lot of flow in the water, you can tell by the way the uh, the grass is. Normally if the grass is just kind of all like in a ball, then it's there's no flow. But if the if the if the grass is pointing like in a direction, it means there's a lot of flow. And other the, gra the grass that's in front of me, you can see it's all pointing down towards in the skillin. So there is quite a lot of flow. Again, that's not a bad thing. I like the river when it's moving. Every now and then the, uh, the tip will spring back nice and soft, which that just means that the feeder has obviously been moved in the water. You get to know bites quite... Uh, bites are different. If it tips like that there, and it springs back like that, then that something has happened to the feeder to make it move. Something has picked up the bait, so that's a bite. If the tip's just going like that there, nice and slow with no de no deliberate action, that means that the tip your feeder has probably moved a little bit in the current. And it's probably moved down the river a little bit. But the three bites that I have had have all been uh, drop back bites, so that's where the tips like that there, the springs back like that, so they've all been drop back bites, and they've all been pretty solidly hooked, so they're not shy of the uh, the four foot seven pound uh, size twelve hook. We'll go into talking about the seat box. What do I want with my seat box? Well, for me, seat boxes have to have specific things. They have to be light enough for you to carry them. They have to be sturdy enough for you to sit on them. And they have to have the Basically, the ability to hold all your kit that you need. Now, I used to have a Reeve seat box. Brilliant seat box. Solid as a rock. However, it weighed a ton. It literally was the heaviest thing I've ever tried to carry in my life. Now, fishing in England with it was easy because pretty much everywhere I fished in the match circuit, you drove up to your peg, 
or you're fishing a carp pond, or you're, you know, you don't have to carry the thing. Coming back to Northern Ireland, where a lot of the places you won't be able to get a trolley because it's, you know, you have to put it on your back and move it, unfortunately. The Reeve just killed me. It was an absolute beast of a seat box. So I ended up selling it and getting rid of it. I then picked up the Preston Space Station, the one that I'm sitting on right now. Now, there were some things I had to do to this to make it more comfortable. I had to buy an extra deep tray that clicks onto it. Not so much for adding stuff or storage, but more so to kind of raise the seat up. You want your knees to be at right angles, from, so your feet are on the footplate at a right angle. You don't want to be, you know, kind of all hunched over or all crunched up or all fucking sitting at a strange angle, because it's not comfortable. So I added an extra... It was, I think it was an extra 50 millimeter seat tray thing. So that raised me up 5 centimeters, and that was perfect. I then added the chair that you see me sitting on, the, uh, the folding chair. Uh, purely because it provides support for your lower back. I'm suffering from uh, chronic back pain. I have injuries where my lower lumbar are starting to... Uh, well, they're starting to fuse together. They're from... You know, my, my back is screwed, basically. So I need that support. My days of picking up a big heavy backpack or a big heavy seat box and carrying it, you know, 100 yards through a field, they're gone. They're long over. So that's why I don't do comp competition fishing anymore, is because I can't guarantee that I'm going to be able to get to the pegs because my back won't take it. Won't take walking through soft ground with all the gear, just won't take it. So, the other thing I like about this particular seat box that I have is the ability to put things like a tray on it, or the storm shield that holds my bait, or my rod hold all, or a bar that holds your keep net. So, everything is stuck to the seat box. If I'm fishing somewhere like here in Northern Ireland, there's a, there's a stretch of Loch Arne called Chory. Chory has concrete jetties. Again, they were built sometime in the 70s, I think, but concrete jetties. You're not going to get a seat, but you're not going to get a bank stick through that. So you have to have everything connected to your seat box. So don't, you know, these are one of the things that you have to kind of think of if you're coming here to fish. You know, as a, most match anglers that come here, they're going to have all this stuff anyway. But if you're just an occasional angler, you've got to think, am I going somewhere where I'm not going to be able to put a bank stick in or a rod rest? Now this seat box is set up for match angling, even though I don't do any match angling no more. There is other options. Uh, I know Preston Innovations have produced a feeder chair, which is like the chair that you'd have for pike fishing, but you can clip all the off-box and on-box accessories to it. And it provides you with some comfort. Uh, Corum do the same one. Corum do a different one even. Again, Corum is more specialised to barbell angling. But there is other options out there, so you don't always have to buy a seat box to come and do this type of fishing. I'm going to show you a photograph now of my top tray in my seat box. The top tray is where I put everything that I need to get hold of through the day's fishing. That tray you'll see is packed full. I'm going to put up a photograph now of the tray that's underneath it. Everything in that tray is stuff that I don't really need. You know, I might need it, but I don't need it right away. I might need hooks, but I don't need them right away. You know, I've got spare contact lenses in there in case I lose one. You know, it's stuff that you don't really need. You'll see there, there's empty trays, there's empty spaces. Just because you have space somewhere doesn't mean you have to fill it with some stuff. I'm going to show you a photograph of the bottom tray that holds the pole stuff. Now, as you can see, it's just got 
you know, a few pull rigs in it, not an awful lot on it. That's just what that that what comes in that the, this this thick box comes with the shallow tray and one main drawer. So like I said, I've added an extra drawer and I've added seat. That makes sitting and fishing more comfortable. All the things that I've added or picked up or done throughout the years is all the trays that you see. I mean, trays are brilliant because you can set the stuff on them, it's kept secure, it's at your hand, it's ready to rock and roll. You know, there's two types of rod rests I have. The one at the minute is just a Preston feeder arm. But there's another one that holds your feeder straight up in the air. If you're fishing and if this river was moving a bit more, then I'd have my rod up, up high. But I don't really need it at the minute, so this is why we're fishing. Basically you want to have your fishing station as organised as you can. I don't like having stuff all up the bank, all over the place. I try and keep stuff as organised as possible. You know, there's a tray behind me. The, the, this back tray and it's holding uh, GoPro equipment, but normally it would hold like a you know a spare hook length box or something like that. There, if it was fishing somewhere, I had to use hook lengths, multiple hook lengths because of the snags. Then you go through them quite a lot, believe me. But it's all about keeping yourself comfortable. You're sitting up in a nice, easy position, you're not getting like, stressed or wound up or you know. You sit in the wrong position for a day and I guarantee you're back in your knees and your legs will be in bits. So you have to kind of sit properly. You know, there's nothing wrong in being comfortable when you're out here. The base unit that's in this seat box, the base unit holds spare spools of mono, you know, a box of floats, spare rails, or rail, rail spools, it doesn't hold an awful lot. Uh, so there we have it. My seat box. Here's the base unit for the seat box. That's how it attaches. That's what's in it. Just a few little bits and pieces, floats, spare spools, line. That slides into the base of the seat box. It does clip down, there we go. It just slides under the seat box, so when you're lifting the seat box up, it's all clipped in. I get the question all the time, am I sponsored by Preston? <laughs> no. I just like the Preston gear, I mean... When I go fishing with Cecil, you'll see Cecil wearing Census. You know, he prefers the Census gear, although his box isn't Census, it's a different brand. You know, right now I'm wearing tracksuit bottoms that are draining, you know, so I don't kind of have, you know, I don't have everything 100% one tackle brand. I use stuff that if I, if it's good, then I use it. The next thing I'm actually looking at getting is, or even not thought to maybe buy, but to have a look at, is one of the, uh, the Guru Euro Keep Nets. They have the metal rings, the metal ribs, and the way they're made is the, the ribs are on the outside, they're solid metal, so they shouldn't get as destroyed as the keep nets do. Uh, this keep net is basically on its last legs, you know. It's due to be replaced. I have the replacement sitting, I just haven't. I'm going to use this to the death. You know, I want to get my best out of it. They're not cheap. And... If you're starting this sort of fishing, you don't have to buy, you know, top end keep nets. You can get Shakespeare stuff that's like 20 or 30 quid. Go for that. You know, if you're fishing somewhere that you're not fishing all the time, you're not doing this type of fishing all the time, then don't get pulled into the trap of, I have to buy a Drennan, Daiwa, you know, something. I have to buy something with a name in it. You don't. That's one of the traps I think that novice anglers get pulled into. They go in somewhere in the sport and they see price tags that are not budget. 
And then they get a bit panicked and think, oh, maybe this sport's not for me. Nothing could be closer to the truth. You know, you can do this type of fishing on any type of budget. You know, the very first seat box I ever had was one of the Shakespeare plastic boxes. And that thing, you could kick it up and down the bank and it would still be fit to go. Only three fish so Man. far. Great point, isn't it? Yeah. Look at you, Town. Thanks, babe. That was the five minutes. Normally I have a little, uh, normally I have a wee stop clock thing with me. It's actually for cooking, but you can time it for like minutes. So if I'm fishing somewhere like this, I can say, I want the bait to be in the water three minutes, five minutes, whatever. And it just bleeps and lets you know that, right, you've had your five minutes. Let's get some more bait out there. Let's get something different on the go. Coming up to the point now where I'm going to have to change the feeders to the smaller feeders because I've given it. Uh, I've been fishing now for nearly two hours and I'm still using the bait up feeder so I should probably change to the smaller feeder. And that's me on the bottom. Set the rod down, let, let the current take the line, let it form its nice bow, and we're ready to rock and roll. Still feeding hemp, corn, castor. That's, that's, that's two lots of boats that's went past that's given me the big thumbs up and that they like the channel. I, I like the positive stuff, it's really good. <laughs> So, if you're out there watching this, then thanks very much for watching. Maybe give it a wee like. You know, share it to your social media or whatever. Helps the channel grow. So, it's all good. The first guy that pulled in is the pike angler of uh, one of the old clubs I'm in with. The pike angling club in Northern Ireland, or Great Britain in Northern Ireland. And we were just chatting about the pike fishing season and about how the the, the Kung Flu's effect is likely to affect the pike fishing season. How there will be no meetups or stuff like that there. It is what it is, unfortunately. You just have to deal with it. I have friends that work in local hotels and they're they're struggling, they really are struggling. We need to get back to some sort of normality really quickly. Top tip. Get yourself a small bait tub. Put some loose feed into it. Start off with some hemp and corn. Take your, your choppy choppy scissors. Give it a quick blitz. Crush up some of that hemp, let the oil out. Crush up some of that corn, let the juice out. Then add a handful of casters and a handful of chopped worm. Now that looks, if you were a fish, that would be like hot chips to a tramp. They would be all on that in a second. So that's what I put inside my window feeder. So that'll hit the bottom. All that juice and all that oil and all the attractiveness will head out to the bottom. 
and hopefully it'll bring the fish in because it's got a bit quiet and I've decided that it's about time to introduce some chop worm let's see how it works out shall we while we're having a bit of a slow spot in the action the bigger fish have disappeared now I'm only getting small skimmers roach but while we have a lull in the action I'm going to discuss swim feeders I do a lot of feeder fishing so it's no surprise that you need feeders to do this but what do you store the fuckers in when you need them? this is what this is Preston Innovations Monster Feeder Bag Let's discuss what's in it, or what I have in mind. In the top, it zips up like this. Now, I have some spods, some bait up feeders, I've got some depth markers, and some, what are they? Oh, they're wafers, very good. And then I've got some, these are called window feeders because there's a window in the feeder. Now, quite a few designs. These are the Guru ones. These are the Preston ones. They're all good. They're all very, very good. The only difference between the Guru ones and the Preston ones is the Guru ones have weights that you can change. You can take these off and change them. So, you end up with a selection of spare weights. All my window feeders live in an old drain and reel case. That way they're kept nice and contained and all out of the way. So that's the top. Now, we need to go into here. Here we have three trays of feeders. Now in here I care this is to be honest with you this usually lives in the van because it's, it's quite heavy. But you have three trays full of feeders for most situations that I fish here in Northern Ireland or even in the south. I do have additional feeders if I'm going to fish with with the method feeder rod. Then I have a, a separate one of those plastic trays full of method feeders and all the gubbins you need for method feedering. But because I don't really do a lot of method feeder fishing, they live in a separate tray in the van. This is made by Preston. I've had it a couple of years now. It's probably outdated. They're probably making a newer version of it or a newer model of it. But I've had this for a couple of years and it's still pretty good, still on the go. It's good solid zips, nice neoprene handle to carry it, and a nice padded shoulder strap. Now like I say, this is actually, this is very, very, this is kind of heavy. So normally what I would do, I would open this up, say if I'm fishing somewhere where I know I'm only going to use window feeders, I just take that drenin pouch. If I know I'm going to go somewhere and have to bait up first, I take a couple of bait up feeders and the drenin pouch, or maybe a couple of other feeders, or one of those Tupperware, one of those uh, boxes. And the rest of this just normally lives in the van. This is a cracking bit of kit. It keeps everything nice and organised. You can buy, or you could buy, extra plastic tubs for feeders. So I bought another couple of them, and like I say, they are full of things for method feeders, etc, etc. Well worth it. Well worth the pennies. Like I said, you probably get those on eBay at an absolute steal, because that's the old monster luggage stuff. Preston Innovations Monster Mega Feeder Case thing. 
So you're probably going to have to look on eBay for that. Or go to your Preston stockist. I'm sure they're going to be able to bring in something that does the same job. But I've had that two or three years now and it's cracking. Brilliant thing. You know, I like to have all my stuff contained in one spot. There's don't like having, you know, swim feeders all over the damn place. Because that leads you to go into the shop thinking, shit, I have no, you know, 30 gram extra large window feeders. So you go and you buy a load of them, and then you find them in the bottom of a bag and you think, shite, I've just bought an extra four of them. When you didn't need to. Whereas if you have everything organised, then you have a rough idea if you have to replace stuff, or if you have to, you know, buy more stuff. It just makes your fishing that little bit easier. So, Preston Mega Feeder Case, part of their monster luggage. Well worth the penny. So this is another bag that I have for Preston. This is old, old, old luggage. This is their competition pro luggage. Now this is this is this must be easily ten years old. This is a cool bag. That you just throw all your bait into and it keeps your bait, you know, cold. It's lined so it keeps everything cold. In the summertime when it's really warm, I usually fire a couple of ice packs in there to make sure everything's okay. But as things stand, all the bits on the tray, so this is just empty. It seems tackle companies like to update their luggage every year. Now, if it was a tackle tart, I would have probably got rid of this to buy the, the latest version. You know, I'd have probably bought the latest, the latest all singing, all dancing one, just because it's that newest models. But I'm not a tackle tart. I don't care as long as it does the job. Okay, well, this has woke up. As long as it does the job, I don't care. This feels slightly better. Ah, fuck. fuck, 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 It's slightly better because there's a big fucking pike after it. Get away from it, you bastard. Mm. Slightly better because it was almost the Aesox Lucius lunch. So, there you go. Luggage. Unfortunately, it's a necessary part of our fishing. Now here's the best part of the day. Let's see what we got. It's a bit strange today. I'm actually going to weigh it. No, I don't usually do that, but... I think it's worth doing today. Some good fish in here. Out the way.
5.72 kilos. Let's uh, see the big ones, shall we? See the big ones. Loads of nice fish like that. But the, the best one today is this. This nice river urn bream. I'm just going to pour the rest of them in here. So, just over, well just under 6 kilos of bream, hybrids, some roach, no perch and no eels, so that's a plus, but uh, on to the next one. And here's the seat box in the van, as you can see, foot plate pushes in, seat falls down. You can see the three drawers and the base unit. Base unit, bottom drawer, two medium drawers, two five centimeter drawers. All these legs are designed so that you can fit Preston, that, Preston stuff to it. But you can get stuff like Reeve and you know different companies make different things that'll fit on it. So that is my seat box. As you you'll also notice that. I have some spirit bubbles on the seat box. That's to help me get the seat box level so that I'm fishing comfortably and in a level position. If you're level, then you're comfortable. If you're comfortable, then you're gonna have a good day's fishing. Top tip. Always let your keep nets dry out. Now, I've managed to string this here from a lamp, from a, light, from a washing line to a washing line. If you let your keep nets dry out, they don't stink. Also let you see the damage that fishing on the urn does to your keep nets. It's a, a tough old game now when you fish on the urn. But if you look down in there, there you'll see there's another keep net that's a brand new one so what I'm gonna do with a brand new keep net is get like a either like a rubber tire in her and run it the whole way around the rib or get some cable tie stuff you know, the stuff that you put your your cables in to tidy them up cable tidy tube and completely run it around the, the rib that way it's like a hard plastic as opposed to soft net so there you go, to avoid having nets that absolutely honk, let them dry out and outside in the air. This is a rundown of what I carry in my net bag. Now this net bag has enough room in it to carry three keep nets. I don't carry three keep nets anymore, at the most I might carry maybe two. But normally it's just keep net, landing net, wasteling carry two landed nets. They're both latex. One is a 20 inch landed net. This is designed if I go to a carp pond or I'm fishing somewhere that I might get slightly bigger fish. Standard 18 inch or it might be a 22 and a 20, I'm not sure if a 22 and a 20, but either way, both of them, you can see that they're metal rimmed. I like metal rimmed landing nets, I don't like the plastic ones. Metal ones are good because you can, if you have to push through lilies, you can push through them to get to your stuff. Again, nice free flow mesh, and again the mesh is latexed, so that the hooks don't get caught up in it. Waistling, if I wanted to weigh like a total catch, 
Again, that's carp safe. I've had this one for absolutely years. And the four meter Preston Innovations keep net. And this is the one that I've been using this last couple of seasons and it is absolutely coming to the end of its life because it's been battered by the uh, the locks, the lock. I have a length of cord attached to it, attached to the bottom D-ring. Now, if I have to stake the landing net out, or the keep net out, which is good if the wind's blowing against you, you can stake it all out. This is what I use this for. If I have to keep the land, the keep the keep net off the bottom, say if I'm fishing on a jetty, and I want to keep the uh, the keep net off the bottom because there might be snags or something there, then I'd tie it to like a like a belt, like a jetty or something like that there. And all this fits into the keep bag. It's made from EVA plastic, so it shouldn't rot. Unfortunately, it's not a keep, it doesn't keep the smells in because this is fabric and the smells seep out through that. But once it's all zipped up, holds all the nets, keeps the nets, you know, keeps the water that's come off the nets in the bag. So well worth the pennies if you have the if you want to invest and you can pick them up now for like 30 quid on ebay so a, a good stink bag is for your keep net this is essential first of all apologies about the noise somebody's washing their car but what can you do today's mission is to elasticate a whip using elastic the right I have one that's lined up for 6 to 8 and this one's going to be 14 to 16. Now 14 to 16 is what I would use on carp ponds. I'm hoping that I might get some more fishing on carp ponds but I need to have the whip uh, fixed for it anyway so it brought me down to like a little uh, tip. I like fishing with an internal brush on my whip. Little, so basically it's a little tube that fits inside your whip so it's not going to come out this is my top two this is what would be called a fighting top two you get top threes that are mostly used for match angling roach, bream, tench, skimmers stuff like that there or top twos are mostly for fighting fish like uh, carp so the pole isn't cut to size so you have to go through and you have to cut it to make your brush your bushing fit it which means cutting little sections of pole off mostly smaller and smaller until you get your bushing to fit you then have to do the same thing with your uh, elastic holder that goes into the bottom of your pole now I've cut this off it and I'm going to have to cut more off it. Uh, there's not much else I can say really about them. You just have to take it very, very slowly. Very, very calm. To trim this down even more, I'm going to take a, a Leatherman. I'll take the sharp blade of the Leatherman. And I'm just going to carve a millimetre off at a time until I get to get this to the right. Uh, depth again you don't want to go too mad because you want this to fit properly you don't want it to be too much because if it's too much then the, the pole it'll slide too far on the pole and you'll never get it back again so you just have to trim it down And you trim it down like so, just trimming off little bits at a time until you get to where you need to be. I should really have bought the uh, smaller size. Bushing, I bought the medium size thinking medium would do, but 
Looks like medium is just a bit big, so no problem. We'll try and fit it into the pole. You don't want it to go too far up the pole, otherwise you're never going to get your extractor rod in the pole to uh, get the thing took out. And then it's just a pain in the tits. So you get your pole end, and you want this to slide into there. And then we're going to see how far that's in there. Yeah, so that's in that that's in the pole that far. That gives you loads of room to put your pole onto it. So now the next step happens. We need to take a elastic threader. Elastic threader is just a little bit of wire that's got an eye on the top of it. Like that, that holds the that holds the elastic tight. And these things are about three meters long, so they're friggin' too long for anything, but so you just have to make do with it. When you're trying to unravel it, hold the thing. Because it has a nasty habit of springing out and catch see, springing out and catching you in the face with it. Now, that will suck. Trust me. So, elastic. There's two ways of attaching your elastic to the end of the pole. There is your standard little plastic elastic thing. I don't like those. And then there is a Dacron fitting. I prefer these. So, what we do is we take the elastic, rather we take the, the wire and throw it through the pole. Try not to smash the pole off the van door. Put the elastic through the little eye and it pinches it like that. And then it's just a case of pulling the, the wire through the pole. Until you have the elastic out the end. Now we attach the the sand here to our pole bung. Just gonna throw this over here out of the way at the minute. Attaching attaching this to this, dead easy. You'll see there's two little holes in there. You push it through one hole. In fact, I can't get it to the one hole, so we're going to go to option B, which is tie a loop in this and thread in this. See, when you're tying loops in elastic, it helps to uh, use elastic lubricant. I got stuff. Just a little dot of it. Doesn't have to, doesn't take much. A little bit goes a long way, trust me. And just pull it nice and tight, like so. And then you trim off the tag end. So you have loop and pole winder. Dead easy. Put loop onto pole winder. Put it on the other way even. Like so. And that's it on the loop. That's not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. Right. Now I need to pull the I 
We need to push this into here. That's about as far as it's going to go, so that's that far up into the pole, which means you've got loads of room to tie it out. And now, we have the end. Now, obviously, for those that are new to carp fishing, or pole fishing, or match fishing, or whatever, you use elastic, because the, when you set the hooks, this is basically what you're using to play the fish with. So you want it to be at the right tension, otherwise you're going to be fishing all bloody day. So, that's about a decent, you can do it by, by feel. That's about the right sort of tension. Just pinch it. And because this is the top two, you can slide it down to where you've pinched. And where you've pinched, you just tie a simple knot. A simple knot. Trim off above the knot. And this is your unused elastic that you keep to use to elasticate another, another top section. And you take your end and your little dacron, you set it up. You can see that it's looped. Will you make the little loop bigger? Make the little loop as big as you can. Push your knot through the loop, pull it tight, and there you go. That is your Dacron connector fitted. And then all you do is you get a pair of pliers or something to hold it. Leathermans are fantastic for this. I'm going to have to do this again because I have tore the elastic. Scissors. Magic, isn't it? Do it on camera. It'll be fun, everyone says. So let's repeat process. Trim the the, the ruda. This would be so much better if I had scissors that were sharp. Leatherman scissors, not sharp. Having to use my uh, worm cutting scissors for this. And they're not fucking cut neither. Joys! That is it. And that is it fitted to your whip or your pole. You attach your pole rig onto that. And when you strike into the fish, the fish runs away and has the elastic. So that is your elastic attached to your whip. 
or your pole or your whatever you're using. Now I have another one in here. This is a used with the the green plastic attachment and it's the it same, it's got an internal bushing that fits inside it and the fish, this is for smaller fish, the other one is for bigger fish. Now if I stand these up you can see how much shorter one is going to be. I had to cut that much off to get the pink elastic into it but that is my two pole fishing, whip fishing things and they just live above my above the rod hold all oh. there is of course another way of attaching a whip and that is with a flick tip now this is just a flick tip you would slide on a little bit of silicone over the end of this then tie your line to it and thread your silicone over the end of it and that's what this is, is just a tip hence flick tip if you were speed fishing or fishing for small little bits and pieces you would use a flick tip but I like to elasticate my the two whips that I have more so because I'm planning on fishing a lot more at the local uh, carp pond that you see me fishing another week so now I have to go and get the rest of my van sorted out because the last time I was out it rained, everything got soaked, so I've got to bin a load of stuff and dry a load of stuff. 